Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to the event. I'm so glad you're here. My name is Jim. I'm with Mediamatics, and we are going to dive into a very, what I think is going to be a pretty awesome conversation with a, a good uh, friend and partner of ours, Nick Lilia with uh, Chenier Energy. But first, I want to bring in uh, my colleague, my, my good buddy, Brad, uh, who is right there. I love it. We're all together, Brad. This is a this is always a nice uh, feeling when we can all you know kind of come together. I'm in the United States. You're in. I'm in Germany. Yeah, where it's Perfect. already dark outside, um, but glad to be here. <laughs> That's awesome. So, Brad, uh, we are going to be bringing in Nick here in just a minute with Shinier Energy. He's also a meteorologist, as as you are as well. And uh, you know what we want to do today is have a very casual conversation about using our data to sort of solve challenges within the energy industry and have the ability to, to just have a frank conversation, really, uh, to talk about, you know, some things that are going to possibly make your lives a little bit easier. And you know, with Nick's use case, it that's exactly what it is. Uh, Brad, real quickly, before we bring in Nick, what, what exactly are you uh, most in, uh, active in with, with Mediamatics here at the company? Yeah, so I've been with Mediamatics for about three years now, and I primarily work with our weather data users and our weather drone users to help them get the most out of the data, to help them to make their businesses more efficient and ensure that they take the power of our API and then realize the full potential from that. Yeah, that's awesome. So I have a, I have my drone back here. It is real. It's not a virtual background. That's, that's a real drone back there. And I was thinking we need to come up with a name for it. I don't know. Maybe maybe we should need to run a poll or something to, to mm -hmm. have some fun. I, I don't know. There's got to be some clever thing that I can I can make it part of the, you know, the future of the series, but anyways, I digress. <laughs> let's uh let's bring in our buddy Nick. Nick, yep. there he is. He is with Shinier Energy, my friend and yours. How are how are things been, man? It's been a, it's been a minute since we all got together. I, I want to call your drone Jeff. How about Jeff the drone? Jeff the drone. I like it. I, I don't that. know. You, you could, I don't know how you could come up with you know, an acronym for that. But anyway, uh, I've been well. Uh, it's it's good to it's good to be back in the States. I was actually overseas for the last two weeks. So um, I'm actually really excited to be back in Houston in the background where it's still bright outside um, and uh, where it's warm. And not raining yeah. side. Well, it's a little drizzly today, but it's not raining sideways yeah. and, you know, seven degrees C. And I get to use Fahrenheit again, which is also very <laughs> exciting for me. Freedom units. Um, yes. yes. Freedom units. Good old Imperial. <laughs> well, uh, so I, I don't I don't want to, you know, go too long into what exactly we're here and what we're what we're trying to accomplish. But. Uh, I, I just really want to sort of start out with a little bit more about you, Nick, because uh, you have a pretty interesting use case or you've been using uh, the Mediamatics uh, weather platform for a bit, along with our API. I know that you are a, a huge fan and we are of yours as well because of all the great things that you're doing. So let's I, I just really quickly want to sort of set you up with what do you do, man? Like, what do you like? What sort of things are you really responsible for at Chenier Energy as as the meteorologist there, who's who's on staff? Yeah. What is it that you do here exactly? What is it that you well, do Bob, here? <laughs> well, Bob, uh, I'll be Bob I one. You would, Bob, yeah, I like that. Yeah. Um, no, so a, a meteorologist with an energy company, oftentimes uh, what we are tasked with doing is not only uh, a forecast for. Uh, you know, our, our sites that we've got, or uh, even just, you know, the office. Uh, a lot of times, um, you know, we'll have uh, maybe client meetings or or maybe the CEOs just want to make sure that they can go to lunch, um, you know, and not have to worry about it raining on them when they're trying to, you know, work with their uh, client base and, and all of their friends and stuff. And on top of that, we also have mm -hmm. to do weather forecasts for the rest of the planet. Um, so, uh, you know, a lot of it is demand forecasting, renewable forecasting, stuff like that. So um, a, a meteorologist with an, with an energy company is a, a multifaceted uh, job. You know, I can answer questions as uh, simple as, hey, is it going to rain today in Florida? And how much rain is Florida going to get today in these key cities? Uh, you know, to something like, hey, uh, what's the wind in Germany looking like? January, February, and March. 
Uh, and, and in order to answer both of those questions, um, as you said, I'm kind of a big fan of your guys' stuff. Um, I have found that that your guys' stuff has been actually incredibly useful in answering both of those questions much faster. Um, and, and that's not to say that, um, yeah, I really like you guys, but that's not to say I can only look at you guys, but I, I will say that uh, the, the data that I get from your API, I can grab so fast and is oftentimes a good enough answer in many cases, particularly for some of the stuff that isn't uh, operational impacting stuff. Um, that I can I can John Daly it. I can just grip and rip um, and and run with it. And then for the stuff that is uh, you know more impactful on our operations, um, the nice thing that I like about having access to your guys's data is that it uh, it allows me the extra time to really sink my teeth into things because I can grab so much so fast. Um, and so that's that's one of the the things that. That I, that I actually really enjoy about your guys' stuff, not to like, you know, um, pepper you guys with uh, compliments too much, but um, it's- well, Listen, it we're, really Nick, we're never gonna stop you. Uh. I know. <laughs> I, I've learned this uh, over the yeah. year um, that, um, yeah, when, when Brad approached me, he was like, hey, we've got this stuff. Um, I was kind of like, oh, that sounds kind of neat. Like, let me yeah. give it a shot. And and as soon as I, un oh, I opened the box, man, it was, it was yeah. just like, you, you find new stuff all the time, you know, and it overflows. Um, I, you know, I, I make fun of you guys all the time about your website. It's like impossible to find certain things on your website, um, uh, but once you find it, it, it like it, it's <laughs> like it feels like it feels like it's just like Mary Poppins purse. Like I just yeah. keep pulling more data out of it, um, and uh, it's been it's been it, it, honestly it's been really useful. Um, oh, a treasure you know, trove! I told you guys this that it like there are certain tasks that i have in the morning that this has cut my time in half like my job you know in half it's been great so what you're saying is that uh you're 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 actually getting some stuff done in half the time so that you can have a, an enjoyable lunch or you know uh well, show yeah, the bosses sure. hey look there's, there's that uh but I, but I, you know the the other nice thing is so like you know as a for instance um uh when we put together a weather forecast for maybe one of our sites um you know we say okay you know the next five days look like this and i can grab some of your guys's stuff and instead of having to go to you know pivotal weather or weather bell and I, look I, I love those guys they're, they're great sites they've got a bunch of great data some pretty maps and it's great to analyze the weather forecast but our sites are, want a number, right? They want what is the what is the temperature at 9 a.m. And what I used to have to do, you know, you look at these maps and then you try, try and find, okay, so then is that's there. 50 line is there, the 60 line is there, and uh, 55 degrees, okay, at 9 a.m. Now I just API, I pull up the Python code, I hit enter, and it gives me the temperatures, and I can look at the map and be like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Thanks, sent. You learned Python, didn't you? Sort of like just add, you know, you just started to to build your own knowledge base on Python just because it was like, oh, actually, I can do cool stuff with it. Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, when I started using your guys' stuff, it was all Excel based, and then uh, uh, Brad was like, "Hey, have you tried Python?" And uh, I was like, "Yeah, I'm I'm loosely familiar with it, but I've never had to do anything with it." And he's like, "Hey, you should give it a shot." And I was like, "All right, cool." Uh, I, I don't know how to start this. So I went over to ChatGPT and I was like, hey, ChatGPT, how do I write in Python? And, you know, ChatGPT was like, this is how you write in Python. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And then I went over to Stack Overflow, which is the other great place to spend some time on the internet. And I was like, okay, yeah. you know, you just kind of Google around for stuff. And, and yeah, I ended up writing a, a bunch of Python code to make maps and graphs and charts and everything else, um, which, you know, I, I think I'd sent you a couple of them. But, um, uh, but to, to use those and then those, yes. yeah, yeah, there we go. Um, and then that can help, um, kind of tell the, tell the story to, you know, whoever it is that I'm trying to tell what the weather yeah. forecast is going to be, um, you know, and, and that stuff in Python, all of that stuff. Yeah, sure. It took me, let's say four hours to write that code. Uh, but now instead of spending 20 minutes a day, um, 
either hand drawing a map or whatever, or, you know, trying to cultivate a bunch of different maps and then write a, an analysis and everything. I can just write the analysis, hit, make the maps, and then just grab this map, grab this map, grab this chart, uh, and then write my narrative to that. And it's just like, it's, it has saved me so much time. Um, and, and it allows me to also then, um, kind of investigate the data a little deeper as well, because I have that extra time. Yeah, sure. I could take a long lunch, but, um, but I'm, take I'm, a long dedicated, lunch. I'm dedicated to my job. So <laughs> That's right. uh, what I do is, is I really try and dig into the details and there are certain things at our company that I can't talk about that are, that the details become very, very, very important. And so it, it allows myself and, and Matt Lanza, who also works here as a meteorologist, uh, to, to really like get our hands dirty uh, with some of the stuff to make sure that we are offering um, a really good forecast to the people that need it. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so uh, and, but before I before I cue it over to Brad, uh, someone wa thinks Mary Poppins, we should uh, call it the drone. Um, there you go. Sure. I, I don't can, I don't can hate I that an umbrella. Yeah, <laughs> Brad. I'm sorry. I'm goofing. You please to no. I mean, I, I like that <laughs> name as well. Also works. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was just going to say, as a meteorologist, often the most tedious thing is just the data gathering, the data cleansing, finding the right source. I think particularly here in Europe, where things are maybe a little bit less centralized from country to country, it can be challenging to find the right thing that you need. But ultimately, hey, the expertise that we've got is to make an analysis out of the available data, maybe identify when a model's not totally nailing the forecast and then provide your stakeholders um, yeah, kind of a balanced analysis so they can make ultimately the right decision off of it. So yeah. Nick, what, <clears throat> what exactly are you, uh, I mean, I guess there, there must've been a reason why you were looking for, uh, you know, some sort of an intelligence platform for weather. Did, was there a specific challenge that you were trying to come up with that you could share that would maybe help, I don't know, spark some, some ideas, uh, whether, I mean, uh, no, no. Uh, so, uh, Brad just like knocked on my door and was like, Hey, I got this cool yeah. stuff. You should see it. And I was like, okay, I'll look at anything, you know, um, yes. uh, when it comes to weather, like I'm in. Um, and so he, he walked me through it and, and I'll be honest, we weren't looking for this at all. We thought yeah. this is going to sound like a stupid pitch. Um, <laughs> I want money for this. Um, I'm just going to put that out there before I finish that sentence. Yeah. We thought that we were doing things efficiently. Like, yeah. like we really did. Like we had our system down and we were doing everything just fine. And, um, you know, Brad sent me a message. He's like, Hey, we got this cool stuff. You know, if you're interested um, what was that? Is that AMS last year or it's two AMS, years ago? Yeah, in, yeah um, AMS in Denver. Yeah, yeah, and and he was like, "Hey, you should stop by the the booth and just check it out. I can show it to you." And I was like, "All right, cool." And and he kind of walked me through what it was, and I was like, "Man, that's that's interesting." Um, and and I I thought that it was a a unique way of attacking the problem of this model data is wrong. Um, and, and I don't know if that's how you guys went about trying to do it. But from a user, that was what mattered to me. It's like you guys were trying to fix the problem of this model data is not accurate. Um, and from a guy who needs accurate model data, I was like, okay, I think there's there's a place to use this. And when, when, when I got back and, and when I was talking to Matt about it, we found... That, that we could use it one place. We were like, all right, we got we got one place we can use it. And and we were like, okay, cost benefit analysis shows, let's give it a shot and see how it works out. Um, because it's kind of a, at the time we were like, that's a 50-50, let's see. Um, if it's great, great. If it's not, yeah. Um, and we realized that we used it for the one thing. I was like, oh, hey, we can actually use that over here too. And then I was like, hey, actually we can, we can use that over, over there. And then I was like, hey, what about if we if we grabbed all this data at once and then spit it out to all these different places and then populated it that way instead of grab, 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 grab. As we went, we just said, hey, in the morning, let's just get all this stuff, populate everything. And then as we move through our day, everything's already there. And then I was like, oh, I wonder if it would work over for this stuff, too. And it has um, 
uh, really permeated almost everything that we do. Um, uh, so much so that uh, the the last two weeks I've been um, banging my head against the wall trying to write Python code that I don't understand what I'm writing um, to take even more advantage of your guys' data in different ways. So don't start charging us more. That's all I'm saying is because <laughs> we're really starting to use this stuff and uh, and use it well. Well, I mean, the cool thing is, and then Brad can definitely support this, but I mean, yeah, we have Python, but there's, you know, we have dozens of others. So if you want to learn a few more things, including Excel and, you know, I mean, there's, there's ways that you can totally uh, yeah. expand your skill set. <laughs> Maybe we can even build like a Fortran 77 connector for you. Oh, yeah, I like that. It's good. I want, I want no part of that. <laughs> um, I guess that's that's kind of a good message for maybe anyone who's listening who's studying meteorology, that in addition to learning the science of meteorology, meteorologists are increasingly being asked to say have better communication skills or to act partially as data scientists. Yeah, yeah, I would say probably almost half of my job as a meteorologist anymore is uh, working with coding and trying to parse out all of the weather data that's available. Um, and not to not to drive this into another lane real quick, but just as an aside, if anybody is watching this and you're a student or you're a, a younger meteorologist, um, the models are getting so good that you know for a lot of stuff, I'd say sixty to seventy percent of forecasts anymore. You don't need to do the forecast. All you need to do is take the forecast data and just make sure that it's right and then move on. Um, and so learning how to collect as much data as possible and parse it out and clean it up um, to make sure that it's as accurate as it can be is as much a part of the job going forward as 10 years ago, actually being able to do the physical meteorology um, was at producing a forecast daily. Nick, yeah. is there something is there something that that you can without I don't want to I don't want to do anything dangerous, but is there were, were there specific weather parameters that you were really focused on in especially in the energy sector that you know you really had to make sure that you were getting what you needed, of course, and it was accurate and and everything else? Yeah, but yeah. So uh, one of them actually came about after we uh, started grabbing your guys's data, probably about six months into it. Um, we had some guys at a, a couple of our, our different sites come to us and say, hey, um, we need um, a a certain parameter. I don't know that I can talk about what it is because anyway, it's okay. a certain That's parameter okay. um, that, that you guys actually offered. And it's something that for us would have been looking at a skew T and then going hour by hour on a skew T and doing the physical math hour by hour, looking at a skew T to do that I can now grab off of your API. So, um, and and that was something that happened maybe six months after we started using your stuff. And they came to us and like, hey, can you do this? And both Matt and I were like, uh, no, we, we, we can, but we don't want to. <laughs> and so, um, and, and so I just went on, on your guys's website and just searched for what that parameter was. Um, and lo and behold, it was there. And I can't tell you how ecstatic I was that I could go back to our people and be like, actually, LOL, JK, we totes can do this for you. Um, but the problem is, is that I can't, I can't human correct that, right? Like, I'm not going to sit here for an hour and do the math to like make sure that this is correct. But given that our temperatures are also really important for us, frankly, um, and I can talk about this. Um, and so we've been, we have been so impressed by how accurate the forecast is for the temperatures um, hour by hour out 10 plus days that we felt confident enough that we were like, look, we're just going to grip and rip this. It's not going to be completely perfect, but it's going to be much better than anything else that we can offer. Um, and so, yeah. So, yeah, you just jump on the website, you search for parameter. I went to the alphabetical parameter thing, and then I just typed in what I was looking for in the little search bar or whatever. And yeah, and it popped up and I was like, thank you. Um, added it to our, our daily grab from, uh, yeah. from our Python code. And and away we went. But um, I will say that the temperature data that we get from you guys is uh, dangerously accurate. And I warn, so I'm a former television person 
and and I warn the TV Mets all the time uh, that that your temperature data is so accurate that it's going to put them out of a job um, because you in in many cases it's so close that yes. a human isn't going to care about the difference um, yes. and and so um, that would be that's one of the, that's probably the two parameters the one that I can't talk about but the the temperature stuff is is also big for us um getting yeah. a good accurate temperature means that operations at the plant can run as anticipated um you know and and, and you know like let's say you got to run the air conditioner because it's going to be hot you know for like the next week uh, at least that's a that's a risk that you can say okay well you know we got to plan on running the ac more we got to plan on running the heat more even stuff as simple as that with your guys temperature forecast has been super helpful yeah yeah, I think it's it's also just about because it's a type of meteorology where you're forecasting for very specific parameters at very specific assets, which is something that's yeah. just generally hard to derive from gridded data that you might get to yeah. compare between different models or to try to, as you were saying, pick out from a JPEG somewhere. Yeah, yeah, you, you just can't do it. And then on top of that, you know, it, we do a fair bit of uh, coastal weather forecasting. And I know, Brad, I've harassed you about this a ton uh, in terms of um, you guys, I guess, uh, fine tuning uh, how the spread from the temperature over the water to, you know, just inland is kind of balanced. Um, and, and you guys have done a great job with that because I, I, that is, it is so difficult to forecast the temperature from you know the beach to a mile inland or a half mile inland um because the gradient there is always just a pain in the neck and um and that's one place that this whatever you guys was like every 90 meters or something like that you guys can i can drop a point like that's ridiculous um and and it's accurate enough to the point where in many cases we can just kind of grip it and rip it um rip it and rip it <laughs> You know, I'm gonna can, trademark that. No, you can't. John Daly already has. Um, Come on. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's already he's already done it. Um, but yeah, I mean, so here's an example of of some of the stuff that we'll we'll produce. Um, you know, for whoever, and and this is all in Excel. Um, well, let me back up. The the chart on the left, and then the bottom chart is in Excel. The, the that's a plotly thing, upper right. Um, but the the Excel stuff is you do, I can grab a CSV from you guys and I can populate this. Um, the forecast on the left, that chart on the left used to be something that took me 45 minutes to do every day because I had to go through piece by piece and make sure that all of that stuff was a part of the forecast that I was sending out. Um, now it's it is literally a click of a button and that's good enough. So I, I save myself 45 minutes. The other one is like an office forecast. That's nice because I can't tell you how many times people are like, they'll come up to us and be like, hey, man, what's the weather going to be like this weekend? Well, hey, now we've got a forecast for like the general area that, again, populates itself. We send that out and and everyone's satisfied and people will still come by and be like, hey, what's the weather going to do? But, you know, whatever. Um, and then, uh, yeah, here's just some examples of some of the Python code um, that you can that you can write. And I will say that the the code that you guys have on your guys's website, um, full disclosure, I never used, um, and so uh, I'm sure it's good. But um, for our needs, we had to go kind of a different direction with how we grabbed and parsed out and combined and scraped all of your guys's data. Um, and so while I would bet that your guys's Python like walkthrough is probably pretty straightforward. We had to do things a little bit differently. Um, and I would say to anybody out there that's watching this and thinking about picking up on your guys' data um, to figure out what you need to do with it before you think about how you are going to get it. Because our problem is, is that when Brad was like, hey, here's some cool stuff, I was like, yeah, give me the data. Uh, and so we were like just grabbing all this data without thinking about what we were doing with it first. And we found that, you know, after using this for, you know, about a month, we were like, okay, we got to, 
I mean, we ran into problems with Excel, Brad, you probably remember this, uh, where it was Excel had Excel does not like grabbing stuff from your guys's API when you're grabbing all of it at once. Um, and that's what we were doing. So we really had to parse things out and and rethink how to get it because um, I was just greedy and I wasn't thinking. I was like, ah, I just want it. Um, and give um, me it all. <laughs> I had to like think like, no, 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 no. This is what we're trying to do with it. So let's go back yeah. through and try and digest it a little bit differently. So if you're if you're just joining us, uh, this is Nick right here on the bottom. And that is that is Brad over here, uh, my colleague from Mediomatics, and Nick is with Shinier Energy. Um, so we're, we're sort of wrapping up. I know that uh, we've been this this seems if this feels like it's been, it's only been like a minute and a half, which is insane yeah. um, because, <laughs> you know, Nick's a Nick's a fun guy. And so is Brad. And we whenever we start like geeking out on anything, anything weather related, it, it just, it, you know, it just goes downhill really fast in terms of time. <laughs> so that's good. It's all fine. Uh, but I just want to make sure that everybody knows that we are here. If you have a, if you have a question, you, uh, I know we had a, a few um, on some of the other platforms and, you know, that's, that's awesome. Keep coming them in or keep bringing them in and we'll, we'll make sure we address them. If we can't do it here live, we will make sure that we uh, comment on uh, and respond to each of those comments that do come in and, and questions and things like that. Um, before we wrap, like officially for, for the half hour, cause I really want to make sure I'm respectful of everybody's time and, and make sure that we're, uh, keeping everything succinct, Brad, what are we missing here? It feels like, um, what I'm hearing from Nick is, uh, he has a lot of head exploding moments of just like, Oh, you have so much stuff. Um, and uh, all I can do is just keep thinking of creative ways of, you know, um, saving my longer lunch times or putting my effort somewhere else because, you know, uh, you're you want to keep you want to keep doing big things and, and not have to worry about all this time consumption, which is pretty cool. But um, the URL creator, I know you're a fan of that. So am I. If you uh, if you ever want to do something really, really fast and just sort of have like a direct pipeline into our pipeline. Uh, the the uh, URL creator is pretty awesome. Um, you know, it's a couple of steps and you have exactly what you need. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, cool. I, I can, you know, make a make a PNG. I can I can quickly share with somebody or I can, you know, download a CSV file with all the, the data points that I need. It's, you know, we, we I mean, that's that's the whole reason. Like we really tried to make things as easy to use um, and so that you can really just plug and play however you need to um, with the data, which, you know, you've you've proven, I think, time and time again, Nick. Yeah, I think okay. it's just the level of, of flexibility that we're offering with the API. Um, it's not like other weather APIs out there. Where you might be limited to, say, one time step at a time or picking a specific parameter. or You've got a different endpoint for whatever you want to do. So I think often when we're first working with um, with a new client, Part of it's just that initial discovery period of now that I can manipulate weather data pretty much however I want, what should I do with that and what actually makes sense for me to grab? And that's what we're we're here to do at Mediomatic. So that's um, where we're here to help. Yeah. You know, it's it's all about just giving you everything you need, easy, one pipeline, you know. Um, and here's the thing. I'm not a developer or a coder. But I will tell you right now that I can go in there and, and become very dangerous very quickly with how easy things are to use. And, you know, I'm I'm calling up or I'm, I'm DMing Brad and Nick and, you know, like, hey, uh, I'm so I'm I'm building the dashboard. Uh, so how do I <laughs> uh, how do I do? How can I can I just move this? Yeah. So it's, you know, it's fun. Uh, and it's also like a huge time save yep. and, you know well worth well worth the you know all the money we're we're asking from you nick which <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah yeah you're, you you guys are welcome i i pay you guys twice so uh, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah well and you said that you're doing things that sort of like side projects too which is really awesome like with kids and yeah 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 so i yeah I, that's how i that's why i pay you guys twice so yeah, yeah we, right. we signed up here at work uh just as an aside just so everyone knows this is how much i like this stuff which is really gross um, but, uh, it, we use it here at work, but then I was like, well, I, I need to use this, um, for some side projects. I do a lot of work with students. Um, they intern for my, uh, my website, my blog. Um, and really that's just a platform to help students get access to an opportunity to do meteorology in the real world. 
And I, I really wanted them to have access to this data and Python and graphing and just being able to, in fact, one of the, the pictures that's uh, that's up there, the soil temp and soil moisture or whatever one that I sent over, it's one of it. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's actually from um, one of our one of my students, Caden. He goes to OU, um, and uh, he he used all the data that you guys have to to do an ag forecast, um, which that's awesome. Um, yeah, and so I, I decided that I should probably pay you guys uh, to use your data because it's illegal to steal things. Um, that's right. <laughs> so I I decided to sign up for a a very small. Yeah. Uh, grab your guys's stuff, but it's um, it's it's worthwhile, you know, for for the kids and everything. And well, um, especially and when I, you're when you're when you're talking. Sorry to cut you off, but I, no, I you know you you support STEM right there. That is that is yeah. you know that is ultimately the core of what STEM is, and that's that's really cool that you're able to do that. Yeah. No, and and I I appreciate you guys um, uh, allowing me to grab such a small hand in the pot. Uh, to do that too, because I I, I would uh, I would imagine um, that uh, Brad, you're you're probably not getting a big commission off of uh, you know the the small poll that I'm doing every single day. Hey, maybe <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're just yeah. we're glad that you're happy. Hey, you know you you are definitely keeping this customer happy. Um, because yeah, it's, it's great to have access to all of your guys's, uh, uh data. Um, yeah. and it really does, it really does help us out again, not to shower you guys with compliments, but, um, it's, uh, it's definitely helpful stuff. Nick, I mean, that, I, I think that's the most honest and, and, you know, the, the, the feedback that we cherish the most is just the, the real stuff, you know, the, the real use cases that you're actually implementing our, our platform on and with and and to be frank you know when you're able to come to us and say like hey i just wish i could do this could you do this and make it a little bit better and you know we, we already think we're the best but we're always improving you know we're always working on things that are going to just keep bringing more value um and if if value means it's a slight bit easier or we're adding a few more things that make you go oh well, okay well I, now i now i'm you know providing uh, value as a business. Now I can go out to my clients and then, you know, sort of spread yeah. that a little bit more, which is awesome. Um, and I, I mean, that's Nick, this is the, you know, it, it, you're a friend of ours, you know, we, we, uh, we do realize that you're, you're also a customer, but you know, we, we cherish the, that kind of, you know, interaction and feedback we do get from you and with, with all of really all of our clients as well, but it's just, it's that, I, I think that relationship that we've been able to build which is really helpful. Yeah, I think it's it's one of the best parts of my job as a meteorologist here, talking with all of our different clients and pretty much every industry out there. And then people are always bringing us new use cases for weather data that we hadn't even considered. And then it's um, it's really exciting to find new ways to help them solve those problems. Yeah, we and we have, you know, like we have internal chats and things like that. And it's, you know, Nick just thought of something else that we we should we should look at, and we're all kind of like, oh, you know, hive mind. We get together and start, you know, jumping on it, which is pretty cool. And it's, you know, it's a it's a fun way to actually, you know, solve these these problems in sort of real time as well as much as you can. Um, I, thank you all for for jumping on. I, I appreciate you being here. Um, hopefully, this was insightful. You're learning something, perhaps sparking a few ideas uh, that maybe you want to reach out to to Brad or me or. Or even Nick, you know, uh, we're we're of course uh, available to, you know, when, when Nick's not working and and has has some time to to interact with you, um, he I'm sure he's glad to allow me to speak for you, Nick. Don't yeah. <laughs> look. Here, here's uh, an email it's, address. It's uh, a <laughs> yeah. His home address is his home address. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I appreciate I appreciate you guys, Brad. Do you have anything else you want to wrap up with? Um, no, I think that's pretty much it. Maybe we'll see some of you out there at the AMS conference um, oh, coming yeah. up in We're January in Baltimore. I mean, 5,000 meteorologists under one roof. What can go wrong? Right. Well, yeah. yeah, I guess. Uh, this has been awesome. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate yeah. you. And uh, don't forget, we're, we're on all your favorite platforms. Join us uh, on any of those. We're on LinkedIn, Facebook, X, uh, you know. You guys say Facebook, yeah, yeah, probably Twitter, it used to be Twitter X, no, whatever. We're everywhere. Um, and we're hoping that you can, you know, keep following us uh, whenever you can. But gentlemen, it's always a pleasure. Uh, 